Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that burns all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, Lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O God, I call to you, come to me now. O hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God. Deep in my heart may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all, creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. 
the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Our reading this evening come, is from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life, Jesus said. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which our ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The light shines in the darkness, and the, and the darkness, darkness has not, not overcome, overcome it. it. Let me take you back to ancient days when you might have gone out to a restaurant and sat with a group of friends at a table. Every time that Joan and I went to Mary's Pizza Shack here in town, as the server came to the table, they always brought us warm Italian bread and butter. Other restaurants also brought bread or rolls and butter. Oh, it was the, the beginning of the meal. When I used to be a server in the historic Fairfield Inn in Fairfield, Pennsylvania, our task as we approached the table was to always make sure we had a basket of those freshly made and warm biscuits to put on the table. Now, I'm not sure why we always did that, but bread was so important. It was always a part of those meals. I find myself coming to restaurants, well, at least I used to go to the restaurants, and think, where's the bread? Bread. It's a staple in all three of our meals, isn't it? At breakfast time, it's toast. Or maybe you have fancy bread, and it's called a bagel, or an English muffin. At lunchtime, it's the bread, it's the, it's the item that surrounds the hamburger at places or around the chicken salad or whatever sandwich it is you're eating. Bread, a staple of life. Bread, it's what the people made out of that manna that they found and collected every morning during the wilderness journey of 40 years. They baked bread. Why? because they needed bread. A couple of years ago, I attempted a diet. I'm not sure what the title was, but it wouldn't let me have any bread. I think I lasted on the diet about a day, <laughs> maybe two. I realized I craved that bread. Bread. It's also the slang name we use for money. 
So the one who in your household brings home the most money is often called the breadwinner. Bread. It's what we use to pay for things. Well, when you use that paper thing called money, it's bread. Bread. It's everywhere. Give us this day our daily bread, we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Bread. It represents everything in life. In that prayer especially, Luther described that as all the things we need in life. Every day, what we need every day, we pray that God would provide for us, just as God did for the people in the wilderness. Provide us with our needs. And then there's this text from John's Gospel. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. And it gets a little creepy when you hear those words. You need to eat me. It's almost as if we're imagining Jesus is some sort of attachment to a sandwich or a hamburger. When, we talked, when I used to talk to kids about communion time, I never thought of it until one of our then second or third graders told me privately, I will not be taking communion. But you've just gone through the class. You've understood the, the connection of, of bread and, and Jesus and, and communion and what it all means. Why won't you? I asked. Because it sounds like vampirism. That took me back. Because I know that I crave bread at mealtime. And I also crave bread in worship time. I crave the bread that we have at the altar, this bread of life that Jesus talks about, this bread of life that sustains us in our daily journey, this bread of life that allows us to go from week to week without collapsing faint because we've not been fed by Jesus. And that's exactly where we are this night in our Lenten journey, broken bread. Because in that Passover meal, Jesus takes bread, breaks it, and gives it to the disciples. In our communion time, those words are also, also repeated. In the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to the disciples. As I take whatever bread we're using now and break it and hold it out. As you, I hope, are also taking your bread at the communion time on a Sunday morning and breaking it as you distribute it to whoever's in your house, or as you break off a piece of it for yourself and take the bread of life, the body of Christ. We're not vampires, we're not cannibals, we're none of those things. But in all honesty, in the day that Jesus offers those words to the crowd, they probably also thought, ooh, this is a little creepy, because they could only see the words, not the message behind the word. I am the bread of life. I am that which sustains you in your faith journey. I am that which allows you and fills you so that you can go from week to week, from Sunday to Sunday, being nourished by that word. But that bread is broken at that Passover meal that Jesus celebrates with his disciples just before his crucifixion, that bread literally is broken. And maybe it's also a reminder of the bread that Jesus was tempted to create in the wilderness after his baptism when the Satan comes and tempts him to turn a stone into bread so that he could eat. Break that stone, break that bread, break that fast and be nurtured. But for us, the broken bread is really on the cross. It's when Jesus mounts the cross with his arms stretched out that his body is broken. The bread of life is broken for you and me. And it's shared in that fashion. The bread of life is broken as a gift to us. This has been a strange 12 months 
We're about 51 weeks into isolation time, 51 weeks into virtual worship time, 51 weeks into staying away from a community gathered and coming to this table, which has been so familiar to so many of us. It's 51 weeks that, it's about 50 weeks, I think, since we began that home time communion meal, encouraging all of us to create a sacred space at our home for the time of communion and sharing in the broken bread. I'm also very conscious of the fact that it has been 51 weeks since some within our community have been able to worship with us even virtually 51 weeks of missing the bread of life. 51 weeks of starvation. That's a pretty long fasting time for the bread of life. For those of you who have abstained or not participated in this communion time, I encourage you to rethink that. That bread of life that Jesus breaks for us on the cross, that blood of life that Jesus spills for us on the cross, is what enables us to go from week to week. It's what sustains us in our journey of faith. It's what keeps us from becoming gluttonous for other things. It reminds us how important. I've been wrestling with how to phrase this for a couple of weeks now. I had a conversation with a member here who has shared with me that they were not taking communion. Part of their own understanding and upbringing meant that they wanted me to be giving them the body of Christ and somebody else to be giving them the blood of Christ. I've been wrestling with how to explain that, how to encourage all of us to take the body of Christ, this bread of life that's so important. And it was a, about a month or two ago when I had a conversation with my good Roman Catholic priest friend. For those of you who don't know, Marty and I were part of a hospital chaplaincy program as our seminary training time. Marty and I became good friends. He was invited to our, my wedding and uh, showed up a couple, of, uh, a couple of weeks after we finished our clinical hospital experience. Marty became uh, Alex's godfather, even as he tro trooped off to Nairobi, Kenya to do ministry work there. Marty is now settled in in paradise, Hawaii. And we had a phone call, conversation rather. And I said, Marty, I, I explained what's going on here at worship time. A and in his community, they gather every night for mass at 5 p.m. And he asked me that question. So do you guys celebrate the mass? And I said, every Sunday morning we celebrate communion. Yes, a little play on words because he uses the word mass and I use communion. And he asked, how does that work for you? I said, well, for me, it's fine. But for some in our community, it's a struggle. So, Marty, what do you think? And he thought for a few moments, and then he said, well, how about this as an idea? He remembered, and he thinks it was Pope John Paul II, who came to the United States and celebrated Mass in Yankee Stadium. And he said, so imagine that. The Pope is down there, probably at around uh, second base, maybe, celebrating and holding up the, the host while people are up in the upper deck distributing wafers. The Pope did not bless all of those wafers. He did not consecrate them the way you would have done at a worship time, but they were all consecrated. Wow, that was helpful for me. I understood indeed how the body of Christ, this bread of life, can be here for a little peace for me and for Joan and I on a Sunday morning and for those who are gathered here for their own sense and for you at home. The body of Christ sustains us.
the broken body of Christ brings us together. So in a real way, Marty, using his Catholic background, helped me understand from the Lutheran perspective, communion in a new way. I am the bread of, the bread of life. Those who eat of my body and drink of my blood will live forever. May we continue to eat and drink this broken bread, this broken body, and live forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. and salvation we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in For peace between nations, for peace between peoples. God of mercy, hold us in For us who are gathered to worship and praise you. For all of your servants who live out your gospel, for all those who govern that justice might guide them, for all 
those who labor in service to others. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen.